So now we're in the cockpit of the A350 here with Peter Chandler, chief test pilot. Peter, this really looks like an A380 or it's at least similar. I guess that's on purpose, right? Uh, yes, this, this, it's, a, it's a new cockpit, but it's actually a, an evolution and development of the uh, A380 cockpit. So a lot of the features that we developed for the A380 have come straight into the 350, but we've added a few more uh, novelties and uh, improvements as well along the way. Yeah, you've, you've done the first flights uh, in June last year. How many hours have you locked on personally now? Uh, I'm not actually sure how many, but it must be close to 200 hours now, I should think, in the aeroplane, yeah. And how many pilots are involved in the, in the flight test program right now? Um, well, in terms of test pilots, we've got just under 30 test pilots, so about uh, 27 test pilots working in Toulouse. Uh, all, of those, uh, all of them have now flown the aeroplane. There's a group of perhaps uh, maybe eight or ten who are rather more involved and have done the majority of the flying. But now all the test pilots in, in Toulouse have actually flown the airplane. But, but only two are allowed to fly the flight display at the air shows, right? Oh, well, flight displays are a very particular thing, and that, that's nothing specific to the A350, but uh, we, we limit the number of pilots who are qualified for doing the flight displays just because it's a, it's a, it's a sort of special technique. And although everybody there will be capable of doing it, because we don't have that much opportunity to, to fly in displays, we, we limit it just to a, a few number of people. So we sit here in MSN3. Can you talk about the role that it has in the test campaign? Yes, this is MSN3. MSN is the manufacturer's serial number, so it's, if you like, it's the number three airplane off the production line. Um, it's uh, MSN1 was the first airplane to fly. MSN3 is very similar in terms that it is full of flight test equipment uh, in the back. There's no passenger cabin in it. It's what we call heavy flight test instrumentation. And it's shared the initial work with MSN1. So MSN1 was doing most of the handling qualities, development of flight control systems and so on. This airplane has been rather more for performance and we've used it as well for uh, the environmental campaign. So it's just been to a high altitude campaign in La Paz, uh, the cold weather campaign in uh, Iqaluit in northern Canada. Um, so it's sharing the work, but this is rather more oriented to the performance and systems, whereas MSN1 uh, was the initial envelope op handling, op opening the flight envelope and uh, the handling qualities. And what is MSN1 doing right now? Uh, it's in working party at the moment uh, for uh, another three or four weeks, I think, to update a lot of the equipment there um, to later standards, because of course the standards of equipment on the airplane are uh, evolving the whole time during the test campaign. So at some stage we have to stop the airplane to update the equipment so that by the time we get to the certification tests, we are actually demonstrating the equipment in the standards that it will be for certification. But soon you'll, you'll get support by MSN2 and 4, right? That's right, yes. MSN2 is the one we're particularly looking forward to because that is the first airplane with a full cabin. So that will allow us to start doing the uh, development and validation of all the cabin systems. Uh, and uh, that should be flying with us hopefully before the end of this month, so within the next uh, three weeks or so. Uh, MSN4 then is another test airplane. It has lighter flight test instrumentation, but again, it will be used again for validating performance and, uh, and systems. One guaranteed operator, optimum remedy.